This video is made possible by North Naperville Autos. If you're looking for a quality used car in the Chicagoland area, North Naperville Autos is here to help. Browse their inventory at NorthNaperVilleAutos.com and drive home in a new vehicle today. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2000 Audi TT. Up front is a 1.8 liter turbocharged inline four and down below is a five speed manual transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here TT for two reasons. First of all, I loved this car when it came out. As a kid, I thought this was such a cool looking car and one of my dad's bosses actually drove one of these. And so I remember we actually got him a gift one year of a Masato diecast version of this car. But the second reason is because I recently drove a newer Audi TT. And honestly, it was pretty lackluster, mainly because of its god awful infotainment system. So this car doesn't have that infotainment system. And let's see how the original TT stacks up. And before we get into anything, I want to talk about the name. Because growing up, I always thought that the TT meant twin turbo. That this is a twin turbo car. It is not. It is not a twin turbo car. The name actually comes from old roadsters back in the 50s and 60s. Mainly, the Prinz TT, manufactured by NSU. NSU was an old German company that actually pioneered the rotary engine. Now, I don't own any footage of the NSU Prinz, but I do have some footage of a Row 80, which was also manufactured by NSU. So there it is. And the designers over at Audi loved that sort of culture so much, little two-door sports cars so much, that they decided to name their new project after the Prinz, naming it the TT. And TT actually stems from winning races at the Isle of Man, the motorcycle races on the Isle of Man back in the 50s and 60s. So the TT name has a lot of depth to it that I never knew, and I'm excited to share that with you. Let's get back to that 1.8 liter turbocharged inline four. Well, in order to fully understand it, you have to realize that this car is built off of the same platform as the Mark IV Golf and the Volkswagen Beetle. And so it shares an engine with those two vehicles as well. Here in the TT, it makes about 180 horsepower, which isn't too bad. It honestly packs a decent punch, but nothing crazy, nothing to really set you over the moon. Now the 1.8 liter, like I said, has been in so many different vehicles, so many different applications. I swear, if you go to the Volkswagen headquarters, they're gonna have a coffee machine powered by a 1.8 turbo. Nice and linear, I love it. Very solid power band. It didn't feel like it was hiccuping or losing steam at any point. I really, really like that. And I hope you heard those little blow off noises as well. But that wasn't the only engine offered here in this body style of TT. You could later get it with a VR6, which is Volkswagen Group's ingenious six cylinder that only used one cylinder head, but it wasn't a straight six. It's very weird. Like I said, paired to it, five-speed manual transmission, and honestly, I'm not in love with it. It's geared how I would expect it to be. It's not that. It's the actual shifter feel. We'll talk about this a little bit later on when we talk about the interior, but I'm just not in love with how this car feels to shift. Last but not least, this here Audi TT is front-wheel drive. However, you could get a Quattro version, meaning it had all-wheel drive. So if that's something you'd like to seek out, you can find that in this body style. With that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four main gauges. On the left is my tachometer, in the center is my coolant temperature and fuel, and on the right is my speedometer. I do get a little information screen down in the center. Very, very typical, the 2008 Audi R8 that I drove had a nearly identical screen as well. So it's just a Volkswagen parts bin part but at least you get some nice information. The steering wheel does not have any buttons on it. It says Audi down at the bottom, has an older style Audi badge, which I love. And overall, I think the steering wheel looks really good. It looks really nice and it looks presentable and it's not too outdated. To the left of me, I have my gauge dimmer switch and my headlights as well as a vent. And on the door, I have my power mirrors and my power windows. However, when I first got in the car, it was very hard to find these power window switches 
because they are unlabeled and tucked behind the grab handle. They have no labeling on them at all. And if you have anything less than 2020 vision, you will glance right over them. So a little bit of poor design there from Audi in my opinion, but not the end of the world once you know where they are. Moving into the center, I have two giant climate control vents, and then I have a couple of buttons. I do get heated seats in here, which is very nice. My rear defrost, hazard switch in the middle, my traction control on and off, that's what that means, ASR is traction control, and then my heated seat for the passenger. Moving down the dash, we have the Audi Concert, which has a tape player, as well as an AM, FM radio, but no CD player for 2000, no CD player yet. This is very, very basic. I don't really need to talk about it too much. Very simple radio. Then we have the climate controls and a couple of beefs I have with this. Well, first of all, I think it's laid out actually quite nice. I, I, I like the aesthetic look of the climate controls themselves. However, these knobs are not turn dials. You have to keep hitting them in order to fan up, fan down or temp up, temp down. Now you can hold it there and it'll automatically go up, but then it just goes right back to the center they're very, very unsatisfying switches. I don't enjoy the feel of them. I don't like the operation of them, and it's quite annoying. Then I have a 12 volt outlet, cigarette lighter, an ashtray, and then I get my fuel door, alarm, and my trunk release. Now moving on to the shifter. Like I said, we talk about it, and here we go. I don't like the feeling of it. It doesn't feel very precise. It doesn't click into place. It's not very satisfying. It feels sort of hesitant when you go in the gear. And I'm also not in love with the shift boot. I think the shift boot looks like it belongs in a Mack truck, not a two-door sports car. However, I do like the gear knob, very typical Volkswagen of this era. And actually driving it, I mean, it's fine. I'm just throwing a little bit of a fit just to do so, but I wish it was cleaned up just a little bit. Then I do have a parking brake, lock and unlock button. And then I do have cup holders behind me. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Audi TT from 2000 and it fails. These cup holders are not great. They're kind of flimsy and they do not hold the big friggin' bottle. So unfortunately they get a fail. So a couple of thank yous to the people who made this video possible. First of all, we have Cash for Cars. Cash for Cars wants to buy your car. Whether it's running, non-running, has a good title, salvage title, whatever it is, you can get a free quote from Cash for Cars and they will pick up your vehicle in less than 24 hours. Our next sponsor is Fixed. Fixed is a Bluetooth OBD2 sensor that plugs directly into your car and pairs to your smartphone. The app allows you to monitor your vehicle's health. It gives you a forecast of issues that might come up and helps you schedule maintenance and find new parts. Our final sponsor is Conplates. Conplates is a suction cup license plate mount for the front of your vehicle if you don't want to drill one into your bumper. All three of our fantastic sponsors can be found in the description below as well as videos explaining them further if you'd like more information, but let's get on with the review. Now we got to talk about about the seats the seats are actually pretty comfortable they're not super sporty they don't have really high bolsters however they are comfortable to sit in and they're not annoying me which is great now as you're noticing the seats are blue this has a quote denim interior which is kind of fun kind of different very 2000s to have a blue interior and i think honestly it's held up decently well however speaking of seats we do have back seats so let's go do a back seat review i can already tell this is not gonna be good oh ladies and gentlemen i almost got stuck there i just saw my life flash before my eyes that's the first back seat i physically can't fit in that i've tried i got stuck <laughs> so i'll show you the back seats here on camera obviously adults can't fit in them or at least adults my size which take with a grain of salt i'm not your average man they get seat belts they get little storage cubbies on the left and right but that's it don't anticipate using these i beg of you please you saw me try you saw me try to get in and it did not work so ah, let's go take a look at the trunk so on the back of the TT, I pop the trunk from the inside because the key fob is dead and there is no external trunk popper. And here we have the trunk. Now these seats do go down, which I would honestly just leave down. Treat like a two door, like you just saw. These seats are more worthless than our government system. However, the actual trunk itself is pretty big. You get this little privacy cover. Here we do have a spare tire, which is nice. 
And that's pretty much it. Like no like big fanfare, gag gifts or anything like that back here. However, it is a pretty sizable trunk, which I'm very, very happy with. But like I said, just leave those two seats down. You'll have even more trunk space and this car will be even more usable, which is great. Now we got to talk about the looks. I really like the look of the original Audi TT, which is a highly debated topic. I think this is more of a nostalgia looks good than just like, you know, regular looks good. Like I said, I grew up liking these cars and this is kind of the car that introduced me to Audi before the R8 did. And so I think I have a special place for it. I don't think it's going to win that many design contests. However, one thing I do want to note with the exterior is the rear little spoiler. Now, that is actually a functional spoiler. Back when this car came out, people were so excited about this car and they drove it really fast. And this car, as aerodynamic as it looks, really isn't. And so, these cars would become quite the handful at high speeds. So much of a handful that actually five people ended up crashing their TTs and dying because of the instability at high speeds. So Audi actually recalled the TTs and added that little spoiler. Quite the interesting reason for that. But now let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think of the Audi TT? Well, first of all, I think these are fun little cars for sure. The 1.8 turbo is a great engine. I've driven it in pretty much every chassis it's been offered in and it's been great every time. Makes great noises, makes a decent amount of power, and it offers a fun experience. However, on the opposing side, I'm not in love with the shifter feel. I think it's kind of vague, and it leaves much to be desired. It doesn't have that really sporty feel. It's like getting ready to run a marathon and then to hydrate yourself drinking a milkshake. I wouldn't recommend. I think the interior in here is pretty standard Audi. I'm not excited by it, although I'm not turned off by it. I like the TT. I really do. This is not a don't meet your heroes moment. I never held the TT on a particularly high pedestal, so I'm not disappointed. I'm still having fun. And I can imagine that the drop top roadster would be even more fun. But as much fun as I'm having, I understand why Audi only sold these in limited quantities. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to North Naperville Autos for letting me take out their Audi TT. This is one of their used vehicles. Head on over to NorthNaperVilleAutos.com to check out their fabulous inventory. Tons of BMWs, imports, domestics, whatever you want. If you are looking for a used car, North Naperville Autos is definitely the place to look. So huge thank you to them. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.